Do you wake up in the morning and think to yourself, oh, why is it so hard to rank my business in Google? Surely there's an easier way. Well, you know what? There is an easier way. It's a lot easier than you think. You don't have to have a massive marketing budget. In this video, I've decided to go back into my archives to get the 37 best tips that are gonna help you today. All 37 tips are being tried and tested, and they range from the rocketing reviews to the sublime citations. Products that will make your shop pop to, you get the idea. Some are totally unique tips that you never would have heard of. Others perhaps are just good reminders that you've seen before on this channel. But try them out and your business will start skipping to the top of the Google results. So let's jump straight in to tip number one. So the first tip is completion. This is a new thing that's just occurred this week on Google Business Profile. So if you've been following the things on this channel, you'll know that by putting things that Google's asking for when they ask for it. So you're looking to build your strength of authority in Google. And this is a little signal back from Google to say that you've now got it. So number two is insights. A lot of people don't use their insights. It's very easy to get to, and it gives you so much information. You just go to your account and then you then click on your views this month. That takes you then through to performances. If you just come down the page, you'll see then it mentions your searches, your breakdown, your keywords, click on see more, and that will show you some more keywords. And the reason why this is important is this is telling you what's working in Google. So when it comes to your local SEO, these are the keywords that customers are using to find you in Google. And there's loads of other things you can do as well. You can see what photographs are working. If you go back, you can see also other areas such as what's giving you calls, messages, bookings, directions, how people find you on what platforms they finding you. Lots of information that's building up an understanding of what's working within Google at the moment with your profile. So you need to react to your insights. The third thing is to just check your mobile site speed and how it's viewed by Google. Now this is a new tool I've not seen before from Think Google. It shows you what Google sees as regarding your business website. And that in itself will have an impact on your local search results. So this tool can help you to make sure that you are achieving mobile, being responsive, coming back with a quick turnaround. As you can see here, I've got a result back and I can improve. So it did a search for me from India on 4G. It says that my average rating is there, but it says I've been speeding up 0.9 of a second. It's sped up in the last month or two, but there's ways I can optimize it. I can get a full report and then I can see what's failing and what's improving. So my site speed was 2.8 seconds. So I can certainly improve on that. But all that has an impact on how Google views your branding, your website, your authority, and so on. And my fourth tip is a bit of a trick really, because sometimes when you look at your keyword research, as we've just seen in Insights, it'll use a two or three word expression. How can you use that naturally? So you're writing for humans. How can you use that? How can you get inspiration? So if I go to my breakdown of keywords there, I can see I've got bespoke web design as one of the keyword phrases. So how would I put that into a sentence that makes sense? Well, just put it in quotes, put it into Google and then see the results that come up. And there immediately you can see some great ideas come up. So what about this? Um, it can be incorporated from the very start of your bespoke web design. What are the benefits of bespoke web design? Discover our recent bespoke web design work. All this is just giving us a little bit of an inspiration as to how you could use that keyword naturally in a sentence, and that will inspire you. But here's a little hidden bonus for you too. If you go to the bottom of the page, you'll see that when you use those keywords, Google also uses other words that it expects you to use. So words like smart, services, meaning, agency, examples, those things also are very naturally used by Google in its algorithm. And if you can use those words too, Google will see you as you're creating the information, but you're creating what it's expecting, even though you're writing it for the customers. Now, the next area is to add your opening date. The majority of businesses that I work with, they haven't put that opening date in. Now, if it was just this year or last year, maybe I can understand why. The reason why most businesses don't have their opening date is because this has been a new thing added quite recently by Google. And so the majority of people didn't know that it was added. So if you've got a few years under your belt, that in itself will then start to show the results. So for example, I was established in 1999. 
So I've got 23 years under my belt. So Google will show that as I've got 20 plus years. So that's something that again will build trust and build my authority. If I don't put those opening dates in to the Google profile, if I don't put it in there, then Google can't use it. Now the sixth tip is really something not to be worried about. If you've already verified your business and your business is up and running, a lot of people have said, why does it still say you claim your business? Why is that appearing to just Joe Public? Well, the simple answer is, and the tip is not to be worried about this because all businesses have an area where you can claim it. Why? Well, because businesses can sometimes change hands but mainly because the majority of businesses that were put on Google Maps in the first place were done so before the owner had actually registered it. So if you're registering a, a new business or if you're gonna register your established business, the chances are it's already been added on Google Maps. So the reason why your business already exists is because it was probably already registered for you. But that's nothing to be concerned of, you just then need to make a claim and prove it's your business. And of course, if your business doesn't exist on Google Maps and you can't find it, then by all means register a brand new business. Now tip number seven is quite closely related to tip number six, which is what happens if I've now got a duplicated business. What happens if I registered the business and then a while later after building it up and getting some great reviews, I then discovered actually the business had already been registered elsewhere and the two are there kind of combining and I'm worried that I'm gonna then get banned by Google because they'll think that I'm trying to run two businesses out of one venue. So if there are duplicate listings for your business, don't delete one or the other. You can actually merge them together. And if they're merged correctly and if Google's approved it, then you'll see that actually boosts the ranking of your business. The eighth area is trends. So just be aware of trends that may be coming up in the coming year. Your business can react ahead of time. So if you say, for example, we're doing cosmetics or, or beauty, uh, do a search on Google Trends for say eyeliner and see what is it, what brands are people talking about currently, what's trending. So if I do that for eyeliner here, which I know nothing about, and look for worldwide in the past 12 months, I can see that there was a peak uh, October last year. There's a breakout for Julia Fox eyeliner. So again, you might just want to look into that or Victoria Beckham or reverse eyeliner. Lots of things there just gives you ideas as to what you could be blogging about, what you could be talking about on your posts, what offers you could have through Google Business Profile. Now, number nine is about rising categories. Now, as you'll know from my previous videos, I've always explained that primary category is one of the key factors in ranking. But I've also mentioned in other videos that Google's always updating the categories. So it could be that the category you chose when you registered your business isn't the right category anymore because there's better businesses, there's better categories, there's better explanations as to what you do out there in the Google world. And Google gives you lots of clues on what's coming up. It gives you ideas as to what trends are going to happen by Think in Google. So here's another link to a page that you'll find useful. It's about consumer insights. And if you go to this page, it's just going to show you a little bit more information about what is going to happen in consumer behaviors in the coming 12 months. And there you'll get some articles to understand what is Google noticing? Where are the demands in fashion? Where are the demands in certain searches? What can you expect is going to be big in your particular world in the coming 12 months? Now you might hit on a trend here that gets you a lot more traffic in the coming weeks. So you then build that into your articles, you build that into your posts, your blogs, and you can quite quickly see a change in traffic if you hit on a trend that's up and coming. Now the 10th area is proximity. Proximity is how close are you to the person searching for you? So obviously if you're in an area that's highly populated, then you're gonna be closer to a lot more searches, which is a good thing. But of course that also means that you have extra competition. So why do we talk about proximity being so important? Well, if you were deciding to open a new office up, or if you're deciding to move somewhere, move your business somewhere, think about proximity. There was a recent update called the vicinity update from Google, which is for local searches, and proximity doubled in importance. So don't underestimate, when you're choosing an office, there's a massive factor involved getting close to where people are going to be searching for you. The closer you are, the more likely you are to appear number one in their search, that's a fact. Now the 11th area that's going to really help you to get ahead, delegate out to a manager if you don't want to manage your Google business profile. And it's not been easy to find where this is, but I'm gonna show you where you can do this. So if you go to your particular business, bring it up on the browser, 
And then if you go to those three dots, you'll see there on the right hand side under looking good, on those three dots gives you a few extra bits that you often miss. You want the first one, business profile settings, you click on that, and there you'll see it says managers. And this has now changed because managers now just enables you to have two types of managers. You've got either the owner or the manager. So an owner can edit and add managers and transfer ownership, and the manager can make changes for you. Now, if you want someone to then manage it on your behalf, you make them a manager, you can always take that off them. They don't own the business, they just can manage it all for you. And of course, I've managed quite a few businesses already. If you want me to manage your business, if you go to the description down below, while you're there, obviously, make sure you give this a like and subscribe, and then contact me, and I'll see if I can fit you in to my schedule. Now, the 12th area is reviews. You hear it all the time. Everyone on this channel is asking, how can I get more reviews? I've done several videos that will show you how to do that. But what I will say is when you get a review, make sure you thank the person and make sure you encourage reviews for those that do business with you. When someone says they've enjoyed your service, say, would you mind giving me a review? In fact, I'm not gonna repeat all those tips because they're on my other videos. But customer service has never been more important than it is this year. And reviews also, if you get one bad review, well, others will defend you because if that sort of bad review is an untrue representation of your business, you can guarantee all your positive customers will defend you. And people don't expect every single review to be perfect. So having a bad review in context of what you do, as long as you give a great service, doesn't really tend to affect people's views of your business. The 13th tip is to do white hat maintenance. So what do I mean by white hat maintenance? Well, if you've heard of SEO, often they talk about white hat, gray hat, black hat. White hat is just doing the right things. It's doing really what Google's asking you to do. It's not looking for the shortcuts that get you a quick win, which is often gray hat or black hat. Why do we say white hat's so important? Well, because if you're there to then get traffic in the long term, if you want to have ranking, not just now, but in the future, then a gradual constant maintenance is what's needed. Google's definitely smart enough to know when someone's cheating the system. And if they haven't worked it out today, they will work it out tomorrow. So keep your profile up to date, make it useful for customers. And that's part of the white hat method that I use here. Now, if you're regular on this channel, you'll know that these tips can make all the difference to getting ahead of the competition for you and your business. And if you're new to this channel, then make sure you subscribe because you'll learn from the 22 years of experience as a web designer. I try and share these things with you so that your small business continues to grow. Now, the next area came from Mark Oakley, who put this to me, where even though I have my, what I consider a knowledge panel or my business information that's on Google Business Profile, he showed me that there was a section here that said claim this knowledge panel. Now, I think the word knowledge panel is kind of interchangeably used between businesses and entities. But basically what he was doing was explaining how he managed to get more information through Wikipedia about his business. So he does the British Beekeepers Association. And what he did is he shared with me how I could check mine too. So I checked mine, there's also an entity. So what this is is about Google understanding that Zanet Design Limited or Zanet Design is a company. Now this was unclaimed. If you see in his email, you notice there, it says claim this knowledge panel. And you know, most people haven't claimed their knowledge panel. Basically they will give you more traffic if they understand what it is that people are looking for. So the knowledge graph is a knowledge base used by Google and its services to enhance its search engines results with information gathered from a variety of sources. Courses. But as interestingly, do Film Booth as a similar company in the UK, do they know about their knowledge panel, their knowledge graph? So there's a tool here, and I'll give you the link down below, where I typed in Business Film Booth, which is the name of their company. If I then do a search, it's going to see what does Google know about them? If I do a search for it, you see then it comes up. The entity type, it says it's a thing or an organization. But if I view it on Google, notice here, this is a knowledge panel to claim. So Ed and the company need to claim this and no one else can claim it. You have to prove that you have that business. You've got to be a registered company. Okay, they've got their knowledge panel. This is what we call knowledge panel and they've got it nicely optimized and doing well there. Google doesn't really understand when it puts the words business film booth together, it doesn't necessarily understand what it is. By then claiming it, you can tie the two up, which will give you a greater authority in Google. So that's what I did with Zanet Design, I've got my knowledge panel, but I also managed to make a claim to this. And now I can edit things, I can add more information, I can even change things 
if relevant. Now this next tip is more for business owners that have a shop front and sell products. Now you'll know you can add products to Google business profile, but you'll also know that it's a lot of a bind to do that. But there's this new product that's come about called Pointy and you can add it to your till, to your scanner, and basically every product you sell in your shop, it can be scanned and then it goes into your product database. So every single item you sell will then be showing, so when someone does a search for that product locally, your products will come up. So if you're a business that's got no online presence, by just adding this simple little extra part to your till, this little tool, it can then get you immediately local traffic. So people that would never dream of going into your shop suddenly realize that you do sell certain products that they've never come across before. It can be easily explained in this little video about a hardware store. One of the things that we have struggled with has been, how do we reach a younger generation? I think having an online presence is huge. The coolest thing that we've had through Google is having this see what's in store option. Every single item that we scan that's run through our register, it'll pop up and say, hey, this is within, you know, five miles of you or three miles of you. And that is huge for us. Oh, it's definitely helped with bringing new people in the store who would never think to come here or not even know that we exist. And they've looked up and they've wanted, you know, a part or a product or an item near me and they found us. So how does it work? Well, basically two ways. If your POS is supported by Pointy, then it just integrates freely with an app. If not, you can just get a small little box that you attach to it. And what it then means every time you scan something for your tills, that gets updated onto the database. And then that can appear as a shop, as a product. It can appear under any searches on Google search, on maps. Basically, anywhere your products can appear, Google will do that for you. And that will then bring in local traffic for people that didn't know that you supplied those products in the first place. So if you want to know if Google can support your products, then simply just go into products on your Google business profile. And then if you click there, put in your business, and it will tell you then whether or not you can be supported currently as it stands. You will generally need to have a shop front though for your products. It's not just a case of selling electronic products. Now the next tip I want to share with you is one that's not really been fully rolled out yet. But why not give it a go today and see if this works for you? What it does is Google produces a mini video about your business, but it puts testimonials on there, it puts images on there, and it makes this nice little succinct video that then you can use, and you can even make changes to it if you feel certain things need to be changed. And you can then use this for marketing purposes, you could put it on YouTube, you could use it in social media, it also looks professional because Google is showing that they are supporting small businesses. So simply go to the link down below, put in your business name. If Google can do it in your country at the moment, then it will then start to produce a video. It takes a little while and then the results are quite good. So you can see then how it produces this video. It also uploads it then onto Google business products under videos. And then you can start to then share this through social media to your clients. Now, no one likes to air their dirty washing in public. That's a well-known saying. And surely that kind of has the same effect when it comes to having bad reviews. So if you've received a review from someone that didn't do business with you, or someone that you just can't seem to please and they give you a one-star review, well, we know that you can deal with that in various ways. But the one thing you're not going to want to do is have people go to your website and there you've got then integration of Google business reviews and there's your one star review showing all the time and you don't seem to be able to remove it. So how can you get rid of bad reviews so they don't show on your website? Well, you'll be familiar with the fact I use Trust Index, did a video and showing you how you can use this free account and that can integrate your reviews, whether it's from other authorities. Uh, so if you're a hotel or if you're booking uh, area for say holidays, or maybe you're a business that runs a restaurant or a takeaway service. There are various indexes you can get reviews from. Now, personally, I just use Google Review as my main review, Google Business Reviews. But there, as they come in, you can then use a setting. And to get to this setting, you go to Review Management, click on Management, and there you'll then see the reviews. Now, you can then filter out the reviews. So if we filter out, say, the five stars, just show those that aren't five stars. And there you see I've got a few four star reviews. Uh, so say for instance, I just wanted five stars to show. Then on the review, or if I had a one star review, obviously I'd filter out down to one star. You can then just click on hide. And what that means then is when you go to your website and it shows your reviews, 
which is like this on this widget. So you've got, this is the way you can integrate it onto your uh, website like this or the various other ways you can do this. In fact, this tool is quite amazing. You notice now it's filtering out and only showing five-star reviews. And in effect, that's what you want, is you just want the five-star reviews or, or the better reviews to show. I think realistically, four stars fine as well. Probably one and two star might be ones you're not wanting to show. Maybe three stars still realistic as well. You can choose on that. But that's the first tip. So for the second one, we're just going to consider that not all reviews are the same. So even though you might get one person give a five-star review, another one give a one-star review, were you aware that they also have authority as reviewers? So if you give reviews, you have an authority. If I give reviews, I have an authority. Now, my authority at the moment is level eight. Uh, most people start off at level one, level two. But it's a bit like someone who's, say, a reviewer of a hotel. If he's a hotel inspector, he has an authority behind what he reviews. Whereas if he's never lived in a hotel or he just goes from bed sit to hostel and then goes to a nice hotel, maybe his reviews wouldn't be considered quite the same. So the fact is, is not all reviews or the reviewers themselves have the same authority. And you can see that here. Google reveals that you all have different authorities. You can see a star rating and you can get more information on local guides as well. And maybe it'd be good to become a local guide and improve your ratings so that when you do give ratings, it has a higher impact on those that you're reviewing as well. Now for the next tip, it's about, as I mentioned, you can have too many reviews. But before I go on to that, you can also have too many five-star reviews, which is a slightly different tip, a bonus tip here. In fact, I did a whole article on why 4.3 as an average for a business is actually better than 5.0. So here's the article. If you want to know more about that, there's a video on there as well. Have a look at that after you've watched this video. I'll put a link to it down below in the description. While you're there, you know what to do. Make a comment, give us a like, and I won't say subscribe because if you've already visited this channel, you'll know why people come back. So let's take that tip. Don't worry about getting a bunch of reviews in one go. Why? Well, because Google's proven and it's been expressed many times that having a whole load of reviews in one go can give the wrong triggers to Google's algorithm. Now, the reason being is that when people buy reviews, sometimes they'll receive 50 or 100 within a month. And looking at the track record, it might look good for a while, but Google knows that that doesn't look right. It looks spammy. A natural business that does well over a period of time will get good reviews over a period of time. So just think when you make an effort or a campaign, yes, get two or three reviews in for that week, but just try and get them so that they're more natural. And in that way, then it gives a better rating to Google how Google views those reviews. So the speed in which you get reviews actually has an impact on how Google views the authority of those reviews. Services can rank too. Now there's often this idea that unless you're a shop, you're not gonna be found on Google Maps. And that's not true. Google can also rank services. But let's just take one second now to explain how it works. So basically Google has algorithms. It's not just one algorithm, but it's several different algorithms. So if you're using Google search, it'll be a different algorithm to the one for say Google Maps. Or if you're looking for a local search, it may be different to a national search. Google's intelligently trying to work out which algorithm to serve up the results with. And sometimes they overlap as well. So rather than thinking that you're optimizing for one algorithm, you need to bear in mind that Google Business Profile is a different algorithm to say a national organic SEO effort. And advertising is different again. So keeping these separate in the way in which you think is gonna help you then make good progress when it comes to optimizations. Most business owners just want to be found locally and nationally and just get found everywhere. And that's the problem is it kind of overlaps with different algorithms in that thinking. And then what happens is some just don't bother at all for a while because they say, well, I didn't get any success. Well, interestingly, in a moment, I'm gonna show you some results of what happens if you don't bother optimizing your Google business profile after you spent some time optimizing it. Some interesting results there. But speaking to Darren Shaw the other day from White Spark, he said this is one of the biggest questions he gets asked as well. So over to Darren answering this question, how can services rank in every single suburb around their city? Yeah, so I would say that the answer is uh, you have a few options. So um, ranking 
Google will only rank a Google business profile within a fairly tight radius. It, it varies based on your competition around your address. And even if your address is hidden on Google, it's based around the address that your business was verified at. Every Google business profile does have an address associated with it. And that is where your rankings are based on. So if you want to rank in a 50 mile, 50 kilometer radius, you're gonna have a very hard time. So what you can do is actually open up new locations, but those locations would have to be staffed during opening hours, like in real, have signage, be a legitimate business, legitimate lo location, very expensive, hard to do. You could get into the local packs in all those surrounding areas with Google local ads. That's different than Google local services ads. So you could definitely buy the ads and just targeted placement in the local packs and maps. You can do that. You could target those areas organically. So instead of trying to get into local packs and maps, you could build location specific, we call them city pages or you know neighborhood pages. You could build those pages on your website and rank in the blue links that are under the pack or sometimes above the pack. So you could target those organically. And I think that's, that's it. I think that's all well, that's sense. brilliant advice, Darren. Thank you for that. So before we go on to the next few tips, I just wanted to share with you something that Dean Ayer from GBP Pilot sent me the other day. And in this email, he just revealed to me an interesting situation. He showed that if you stop optimizing Google business profile, it does show. And interestingly, the businesses he optimized for weren't seasonal. So we can rule that out because it was to do with a walking clinic, uh, mental health clinics, he was optimizing for those. And after pausing or stopping the optimization for a few months, you can now see what happened. It pretty clearly shows that things fade out rather quickly if you don't keep updating the Google business profile. Google likes to see a business profile being kept up to date. And the majority of business owners, they spend a month or two and then they then forget to optimize their business. And as you can see from these results that Darren shared with us, that really calls, bookings, they were coming through, they then dry up once the optimization stopped. Now later on in this video, I'm gonna show you also how you can get extra things to help as well, to get calls, get directions, a schedule button, all those things, eye-catching images, are also gonna help bring in traffic. I'll come onto that later in the video if we get time. And this is all about EEAT, and using EEAT more than ever before. Why is it more important than ever before? Well, AI, is making it even more important that you become an expert, that you're trustworthy, that you're an authority. In fact, the EEAT stands for experience, expertise, authority, and trustworthiness. Now again, I was speaking to Darren to see what his thoughts were on EEAT, whether he felt it was necessary if you want to help a business grow locally. And this is what he had to say. Yes, and I think it's a great time uh, to invest in it because it can be a competitive advantage. If you look at most small business blogs, most bus small business websites, you don't see the author, you don't see the person behind that, and you often don't see them talking about their own experience, their own expertise, what makes them the best plumber in, you know, uh, Manchester, all these things. Like when you do take that time to put that on your page, you talk about your credentials, you, you really anchor every page of content to an expert, to an author, that is a competitive advantage because most of your competition is not doing it. And it becomes even more important with the dawn of AI generated content. AI content can't do that. Google is trying to sort out and they're, have, they're gonna have this huge problem where the web is being flooded with regurgitated content, all same, same, same. It all looks the same because it's all coming from the same source and, and the, the AI source can only say things in so many different ways. So the way that you differentiate is going to be really tied to the EEAT. Uh, signals and you send those um, by being original, being authoritative, uh, talking about your expertise. So I actually think that there's no better time to start thinking about that and integrating it into your local SEO strategy. Very important. Absolutely yeah. right there, Darren, and I totally agree with that too. Would you also agree though that you need to have video? Uh, YouTube again yep. shows you're trustworthy, it shows you're a real person. 100%, yeah, so it's a really great point that video itself, it's like you can't fake it. It's you talking to the camera and Google's algorithms, they're working hard, they're you know, the smartest company in the world, they're trying to figure this out. How do we differentiate between AI content and real 
human generated content. And that video transcripts, it's beautiful, it's perfect. That, that was definitely written by a human. Although then the AI is gonna be able to, <laughs> to, to make theirs look exactly like that. So I don't know. Uh, I don't know how long we're, we've got left here before the AI just completely takes over. <laughs> So trust by using video is another important factor. One of the reasons why I'm doing this YouTube channel was because my web design needed to be marketed and marketing is often done now through video. Now the next area is a controversial one because for many years I've said that keywords in a title for a business, particularly on Google Business Profile, I've avoided it and I still don't think it's the right thing to do. But interesting, there's some controversy here because it still gives an important ranking factor. And the reason I thought it was perhaps dangerous was because possibly you could be suspended if you had keywords in your, in your reported and then Google recognizes it and then removes yep. it. But interesting what Darren had to say on this as he had recently spoken to some other insiders in Google. Um, so keywords in the business name, actually I've just been chatting about this with various uh, local search experts and it. I asked them a whole bunch of people that are really tied in to uh, Google, they're, they're all Google business product experts. How often does Google suspend a listing for having keywords in the business name? This is a great question. Never, almost never. Google does not ever proactively suspend. You could, what, it, what they do is they take the keywords out of the name. They will do that if you get reported, uh, which of course then the business owner can put it back in. But what it, the only thing it really, if you have other problems on your listing, like problems with your address, it doesn't look like a real business, then that can trigger the report and then they see the other problem and you get suspended for that. But you're not actually getting suspended for keywords in the business name. Google will just take them out. Oh, that's not your business name. They'll take, they'll take them out. So it's very hard to get suspended for this, which is why this ban is so rampant. But it does make me wonder, you know, if the risk is so low and the reward is so high, those keywords in your business name, you might want to do it. <laughs> so it appears that keywords aren't actively causing a suspension for the majority of businesses. Now the next area is to think in terms of letting the AI know where you're based. Google's for a while now been mapping businesses. And when you understand your location and your nearby towns and cities, and you're talking about them within your business, within your branding, within your website, within your profile settings, Google's picking that up now and going to match that with local searches. Google Bard's been asking for some time now where the location of the searcher is, as you can see here. But it's so they can provide more relevant results to the person searching. And with the recent Palm 2 release, which came out just recently from Google, you notice Google has updated the Bard, the chat tool. This learning language is looking at your website, it's looking at your profiles, it's looking on the sites that talk about your business. It's looking to Google, it's looking to Facebook and Yellow Pages, and it's trying to understand where you're based. So are you making it easy for Google to know where you're based? Now, of course, if you're a service and you don't have an office, then you just need to speak of the service areas that you're based. So that's the importance of location, but also the importance of thinking about your user too. We've often mentioned that on this channel. So what does that mean, think about your user? Well, most people tend to think in SEO terms of the algorithm, but the algorithm is trying to think about your user too. So think of what your user is going to search for next. How does your user think? What is your user, the person that's going to be your next customer, what is he going to type into the search engine? Is he going to use things like, if he's looking for a web designer, would he look for a web designer near me? Uh, would he look for a London web designer? So he mentions the location. He may be interested in the price. So he might go a uh, top web designer, at a reasonable budget price. Those words, budget, top, they're words that again, you need to think in terms of your user will use those words. And so how does AI then match this up with your business? Well, AI will look to your settings, look at your description, look at your website, look at your profile on Google Business, and it will then connect the two up. So old conventional SEO is very different because that was just using keywords. And now we're looking at location keywords and user keywords. So you've got an opportunity here to optimize your Google Business Profile, and that has to be the best SEO you can do currently if you're a small business. Now the next one is consistency. It's actually consistency with your citations. So a citation is where other 
websites talk about your business, particularly indexes, particularly local citations are really valuable if you want to be found in local searches. Now this tool that I use gives a massive SEO advantage because what it does, it focuses on knowing what citations are important to your business industry. So I use this tool all the time, it helps me get local citations, it scans my local competition, it finds what are they using to rank and then it finds me opportunities where I haven't yet registered my business. And I can then look for ways of literally clicking on it, finding the website I haven't registered with, adding my business to it, all for free. And then this then builds my links, it improves my ranking, it improves my recognition of being an authority, and it provides consistency. And the reason it provides consistency is because you can copy and paste the same information. So your business really should be the same wherever you look. It should give the same telephone number, the same business name, the same address. We often talk about NAP, name, address, phone number, and so on. So I use this tremendous tool from White Spark, and I thoroughly recommend you try it yourself. I'll put a link down below for you. So you may be wondering, well, is all the old SEO information now not relevant? Well, if you've been following this channel, you know we've been changing the way we think. We've been thinking more about the user and less about the algorithm. We've been thinking more about optimizing with Google Business Profiles, or we used to call it Google My Business, and not focusing so much on the old SEO keyword research in the past. But also we've been preparing to change the way we think about being authentic, uh, being trustworthy, because again, those are key elements that Google's going to pick up on, particularly through AI in the future. Now, I did a video interview recently with Darren Shaw from WhiteSpark, and this were the types of results people were saying incredibly knowledgeable. They were saying great video that summarizes years of experience. Another one, great video. I trust only both of you for local SEO. Zanet, you are awesome. Well, the thing is, is we're just trying to teach the right way to go about SEO. And we've been trying to be a bit different because we're knowing where things are gonna go with AI. So hopefully, if you haven't done so already, you'll subscribe to the channel and you'll benefit from the future videos too. And here you can see Darren Shaw was speaking to me recently about some of the solutions he thinks will make a difference with AI coming along. So all those tips in his video, in my interview, are really gonna be helpful and hopefully you'll be put in the same comments yourselves after you've watched it in full. So I'll put a link to that video up above and you can watch it afterwards as well. So back to these local SEO things, what do they need? We've looked at location, uh, think about the user, consistency with citations, and now the fourth area is that of services. Well, services really is a great opportunity on Google Business Profile because often we can't change the categories and we don't talk about changing primary categories too often, but what you can do is you can keep updating your services. And recently Google has been constantly changing services, giving you more of an opportunity to really give the details of what your business does. So services should be clear, detailed, and consistent both on your website and also on Google Business Profile. So the fifth area you might want to look at is your welcome message. In other words, when people first meet your business, how do they feel about the manner in which you talk to them? So when you write your opening paragraph, whether it's on Google Business and your description, or whether it's on your business website under the About Us page or your home page, does it start with a warm greeting? Does it convey enthusiasm for what services you offer? I think of the words you're using. And again, you want the website citations and the descriptions and Google business profile description to be consistent. Now these words are gonna prove valuable in providing results, especially when you think of voice search. So people are gonna use voice search even more in the coming months with AI. But you want to appeal with clarity. You want people to know exactly what you want them to do. So if they're going to respond to your invitation to take your services, your products, they need to know how to go about it. So do they call you, do they text you, do they visit the website? Clarity in those few opening lines as well is gonna help you get successful business. If you're new to Google Business Profile, you'll know that there's lots of tips your competitors are using to get ahead of you on Google Maps and Google Search. So I'm gonna share some of those tips with you today, and I'm also gonna enable you then to get straight onto your business so you can apply those tips, and you can do most of these tips straight away that will get you ranking immediately on Google Business and Google Maps. So let's take a look at the first tip that was released just this week. You're going to need to go into Google Business Profile. So, so if you type in your business name and then your business comes up. And of course, you always want to make sure this is up to date if you can, but uh, that's a, just a little bonus tip there. 
So what we're going to do is go to customers and this is going to enable us to make sure we've got messaging. So if you're in messaging, then you go to the three dots and messaging settings. And here you can turn on your messaging on your chat, your read receipts and so on. But also what you can do here is you can edit a welcome message and you can include links in this. And also what's even more important is you can add links to these frequently asked questions. Now you'll know with links themselves, it's a great way of building up your authority within Google and also getting your customers to various places that are going to benefit them and also benefit your business. So here I've got add a question. And then if there's constantly questions being asked on the chat, then I can make sure I give the answer and the question as an automatic response. So just think of the value of that and then take them through to maybe a landing page as to how they can benefit. So I've done this, for example, here. Do you offer a Google business course? I often get asked that. And now I can then put the link through to where that course is. And then that takes them through to the place they're looking for. And that's automating. So that's giving a much better service to my customers when they visit me. Now, a second trick you can do is to actually find internal linking benefits by a little trick you can do in Google. And it's all to do with understanding how Google indexes your site. So if you type in site and then your website, so my website is zanet.co.uk, that'll produce all the results that Google has on me. But now if you put into quotes, let's say for instance, I wanted to find that 30 day course that I do. So if I type in 30 day and put that into quotes, now I can see images to do with 30 day. I can see my free 30 day business challenge. I can see again. And what I want to do now is if Google ranks these as being important to 30 day on my website. And that's the most important page on my website, my free 30 day challenge. Then what I can do is start using that as the main keywords through to linking through to these pages. So this is a great way of finding say a local SEO. And now this tells me that Google ranks this page as the best local SEO page that I've got on my blog, local SEO and then I can link through to this. So whether you're internal linking within your business website, whether you're internal linking within your offers, your posts, whatever it is on Google Business Profile, by using that site part of your website, you're boosting even more the very pages that Google's already valuing. Now for the third trick, go back to your business profile again by typing in your business or my business and just pull this up. You'll kind of, we call this a knowledge panel, side panel, and just look at products for a moment. Now here should be a list of all your products. If I click on view all, and these are my products, but where do you get products from? We well, can get products from either services or you can get it from various products that you sell. So if you've got a lot of products, then you can fill this up and you may want to then categorize them as well. So you notice that we have various categories. So it picks these up as well. And you notice that those categories then so if I wanted to say special offers, click on this. And these are my special offers that I'm currently doing. What you should be doing is these should be then reflecting what's on your website. So if I go back to my website, go to my home page, and you'll see these five of various services here are reflected as five special offers here. And of course, if I go through to one of these, so like MailChimp, click on this and order online. And this then takes them through to that particular landing page. And there then I can contact them and deal with whatever it is that their inquiry is about. You notice here also I have product posts. If I click through to this, it could be that you're offering certain types of packages or plans. So again, I've got a page here where I speak about WordPress care plans, care plans, silver, gold, and platinum. And then I can make these into products themselves. Google at the moment is showing products. And as you can see, that is quite a large chunk of a business profile. And a lot of people aren't using that at the moment. So make sure you at least get three or four in there and try and categorize it if you can too. For my fourth tip, have you ever wondered how you really rank and how you rank perhaps compared to other businesses? Because when you do a search on your own maps, of course, it already knows from your cash. It already knows from where you're sat. It knows kind of already that you're going to be ranking high because it knows that you own that business. But what about for someone around the corner? What would they, how would, how would you know what they're finding when they're searching for your business? Well, I'll do a search for my web design business, but the way I want to do this is I've got a free 
local rank checker for you. So I'll put the link down below. And you can just now type in your business. So let's uh, let's take a uh, window cleaner business that I've worked with, uh, Rue Window. And it'll then find it. So that's good, it tells you first we're on there. And then you may want to know then what actually would a person type in to find it. So they're not going to be putting uh, appliance or pet groomer, but they would put window cleaner. So window cleaning service, there you go. And this is totally free. You can see then how you perform when a search is done. So this is now going to go out there. It's going to go to various areas around where you're particularly registered. Now, while that's populating, Surf for Local is a really useful tool. So I'll put a link to this down below. And I've also got some credits that you can have as well. So try those out. But you can see for yourself where you come. So the average position it's looked so far for window cleaning services position three. And it looks like it's now completed. That gives you a rough idea. It's saying it wants these activated as well. So the fact is it's done those queries for free, which is an excellent service. And you can try that out. So once you've done that, you can then make some adjustments to your business, go back and see if it's had an improved result. Now for the fifth tip, it's so important to get photos and relevant photos of your business. So I've done other videos that have explained how you can take good photos, what types of photos should be taken. But one of the things you may want to do is just nail your photos this weekend. So you could get a photographer to come along, hire them for the day, and then have in mind what it is that Google's actually looking for. Now, not everyone realizes, but Google's very specific as to what various photos should be done in various categories. So I'm gonna put a link down below again that will show you what you need to follow when you do these photos. But basically, as you can see here, these are tips from Google. And they explain what exterior photos are, interior, product photos, photos at work, food and drink, if that's relevant, common areas, rooms, team photos, and so on. But just read through that, produce those photos. Photos produce a huge amount of traffic for me. And if you haven't tried adding recent photos, if you haven't had good quality photos of your business, not generic photos, not ones off the internet, not ones from other businesses, but your photos, then you've missed out on some benefits of ranking. So just next time you're at work, take some photos, but have these things in mind and you'll see a tremendous boost in your ranking. Now for my sixth tip, it's about understanding your customers. So how do your customers actually find you? How do they come across your business? Well, Google doesn't let you guess, it tells you, but most people don't realize where you need to go to to get that information. So if you head to your business again in Google, sign in if you haven't done so, and you'll see here it shows you views this month, and you just click on that, and what that will do now, it'll tell you how many calls you've had, how many messages you've had, how many bookings, what directions, websites, but also what it does is it tells you where they came from and how they found you. So just looking at my business, I can see that the majority come through Google Maps on a desktop, so that's my audience. Having said that, some do find me through Google search. If I add these together, I can see that about 72% of people find me through a desktop. So my audience isn't really mobile. It seems to be they're on desktops, so they're businesses, maybe in offices. Whereas yours may be very different. So if you wanna know more about mobiles, then you can see my search 15%, my maps 13%. And of course, the other thing as well, you may be interested to know is what are the keywords that they're finding you with. So when they're searching on Google, these are the keywords they're using. When they're searching on Google Maps, these are the keywords. So when you combine these two things together, you're beginning to understand what it is your customers are looking for and how they're finding you. So don't ever avoid looking at this. This should be looked at each week when you're going through your business and when you're deciding also how to appeal to your audience because when you understand your audience, Google will rank you higher because the signals go through to Google to say that your audience is spending longer, it's getting answers to its questions, it's being given a good service through Google Business Profile. That's what Google's trying to produce by means of this profile. Now from a seventh tip, it's all about citations, but again, that Surfer Local will give you some help to know what it is your competitors are getting their citations from. So if you think that there's a reason why your competitors are doing so well in Google, it could be down to the fact they've got some great citations that you've yet to discover. 
So how do you get citations? How do you get them for free? Well, if you head over to Surfer Local, I'll put again a link down below if you want to go there. And here I've got my uh, business and I can um, I'll just accept that. This again just helps me to see if I'm ranking on keywords and it's suggesting I just, this is just a side point, it's suggesting that there's a good number of searches for UK web design and it's just working out how um, I do on that. I'll just let that play out. Okay, so what I want to do is go to guidelines and citations. And I know that there's quite a few that I need to still do here. And what this has done is it's looked, it's found 20 of the most important citations that my competitors are using as well as myself. So there's a few here that I've not come across. So I can click on what do they, they, they know. Uh, I can see find open, it's number for local. Uh, and I can see there's others here, yellow pages. I haven't actually done that one. So all these are considered important in my niche and you can just run yours as well. So you just click on your location, you add it, and then you can just work through these as well. But citations is always one that most people forget to use. But now early in the video, I mentioned that there was a video that you need to watch next and it's right here and it's gonna help you rank for the coming year ahead. So don't miss this one.